Coming up on this edition of Inside Bellingham, we're going to listen to one of the phenomenal bands playing this year in the city's free Concert in the Park series. And Kim Spence spends a little time with Brian Griffin, who shares the rich history and lively present of Fairhaven's Village Green with us. And a great excuse to get to know your neighbors, National Night Out Against Crime in Bellingham. And meet Tim Stewart, the city's new director of planning and community development. All this and Dirty Dan Harris, too, although he doesn't say much, right here on Inside Bellingham. Welcome to Inside Bellingham. I'm Doug Waldo. Today we thought we'd spend a little time in Bellingham's historic Fairhaven District. Fairhaven was a bustling new town in 1889 when they tried to impress the railroad and become the western terminus for northern train passengers and freight. When Seattle was chosen instead, thousands of people left here to seek their fortunes elsewhere and Fairhaven adopted its charming, village-like quality that we know today. The historic red brick buildings and interesting storefronts provide a wonderful setting for shopping, walking, or just relaxing. There are ample eateries, interesting shops, shady spots to hang out, and lots of historical artifacts to explore and ponder. Fairhaven is a wonderful example of what we can do when we all work together to enhance our neighborhoods. Well, over the next several years, Tim Stewart will have a great deal to say about growth and preservation in Bellingham. As the new planning director, he steps into a critical position for our city. He'll oversee how Bellingham manages growth over the next many years. And we thought you'd like to get to know Tim and hear his thoughts about Bellingham's neighborhoods, redevelopment of our waterfront, the planning process, and his role in guiding the city's growth. One of the challenges and opportunities of uh, downtown redevelopment is the waterfront. Bellingham has a great history of uh, work with Georgia Pacific and the uh, place that Georgia Pacific has had in the community. Um, now we're facing uh, an opportunity to redevelop that in a way that benefits the downtown uh, and also provides for the growth, the next generation growth of the city. Um, there are risks and uh, rewards for everyone involved and that includes the port, the city, the community, uh, the university, and uh, the environmental groups who may benefit from some of the habitat restoration. But there are also going to be challenges. There's going to be impacts that we uh, are going to have to study in greater detail. Um, there's going to be a lot of choices that this community is going to have to make about what that future looks like. One of the most important things to keep in mind is connecting the waterfront to the downtown. Um, we have to use these two great assets together for mutual benefit and not develop one to the exclusion of the other. Height limits are going to be an issue. Um, how we use the property, how that property is designed, what restrictions are placed on it, who gets and who pays are all very, very big questions. So the process of making those decisions is going to be as important as I think the decisions themselves. There are a couple ways that you can talk about a successful downtown and one of the most important issues is the level of capital investment that the private sector is willing to bring. We've seen the partnership work in downtown Bellingham where the city and the uh, private sector have worked together to invest in redevelopment. Another indicator is the level of activity, the number of people and activities and things that are going on to make it an exciting place to be. 
and all of those indicators are present in downtown Bellingham today. We have a strong partnerships between the community, the government, the private sector, and we have activities happening all over the place, whether it's the farmer's market or sitting outside having a coffee or going to a restaurant or going out and listening to some music and having a, a entertainment. So downtown Bellingham, while it's still fragile, has all of the ingredients for a successful future. The uh, State Growth Management Act requires cities like Bellingham to accept and accommodate growth and development. The challenge is how do we do this in a way that preserves and protects neighborhoods uh, throughout the city? Bellingham has wonderful neighborhoods and their character and their tradition really need to be protected. One of the elements of the Growth Management Act is preservation of neighborhood character. And the trick, the challenge that we're going to face is accommodating growth uh, at the same time that we protect these beautiful, rich neighborhoods. You know, the only thing that's worse than planning for new people, 31,000 new people over the next 20 or 30 years, the only thing worse than that is not planning for growth and having it happen to us. So as we think about the future and as we think about growth at the edge or inside, we need to keep in mind that it's not just one goal that we're seeking to achieve, but many goals. Accommodating growth, preserving neighborhoods, enhancing the environment, providing for economic development, providing for affordable housing. These are issues that we will continue to debate um, for years to come. And it's the debate that's important in finding solutions to these very difficult problems. If you'd like more information about Bellingham's Planning and Community Development Department and what's in store for our city, visit www.cob.org slash pcd. Part of what makes a city work is having people places, those spaces where we all like to hang out, soak in the surroundings, and enjoy each other. And what makes these places even better is when citizens and government join together to create and sustain them. Well, one such spot is Fairhaven's Village Green, a small urban park in the heart of everything. Triad Park host Kim Spence talks and plays bocce ball with park champion Brian Griffin, a man who played a very big part in making this special community place a reality. Brian, tell me about the collaboration it took to create this wonderful place. Well, first the city bought the property with Greenways funds two or three years before a group of private citizens got this design and went to the city and, and asked them to join in a partnership to build it. The city paid for a little more than half of it. Uh, the private group raised uh, just under a half of the money to make this happen. Obviously, you put your heart and soul into it. What motivates you to volunteer for things like this? Well, this is my town. I've lived here all my life. And I've spent some time traveling in Europe, and I've always been fascinated with the public spaces that you see there. And uh, this place has, has lived up to my dream. It, uh, it really works. People just love it. And there's always something going on here. Fairhaven history was the basic theme of this park from the beginning. That's why we wanted people to be able to put their family names on the bricks. And The uh, Tulip Fountain is a historic piece of Bellingham's history. There used to be six of those fountains all around Bellingham. We were able to find one of those and renovate it and reinstall it. 
so the idea came, we ought to have a statue of Dan Harris. It was just dumb luck to discover that we had a wonderful sculptor living in Bellingham in Robert McDermott. We were lucky enough to get Conoco Phillips to pay for the foundry work and, and McDermott essentially did the sculpting for free as a gift to the community. Well, that was a wonderful bonus. Adds a great deal of character to the, to the park. Tell me about your hat. Well, it's a little corny, but the wonderful statue of Dan Harris uh, wears a bowler hat. And uh, these were very popular when Dan was alive and, and in Fairhaven. And so kind of to pick up on that theme and to honor Dan, uh, we have 230 some people in the community who own bowler hats and wear them on Fairhaven type events. And the bocce ball is that kind of an event. Just give me a thumbnail sketch of the game of bocce ball. The final object of the game is to get as many of your four balls or your team's four balls next to the little marker yeah, ball. Good, good, good. Oh, very nice. In Bellingham, women, men of all ages play it right here. And we have a kind of an informal gathering at 5 o'clock on Mondays where everyone is welcome. We set up three, up to three courts here and oh, uh, play bocce nice. ball. Whether they're coming here to play bocce ball, see a movie, shop at the farmer's market, or just kick back, loads of people love to come to the Fairhaven Village Green. Even when there's nothing planned, there's always something to do. For more information about opportunities and events with parks and recreation, contact the department at 676-6985 or visit the website at www.cob.org slash parks. Outdoor music is a summer tradition here in Bellingham. Many of our parks host live tunes by local bands. Everything from blues to rock to klezmer, uh, folk, jazz, great family fun. The Parks Department stages free concerts in several different parks all summer long. Now, we recently visited Big Rock Garden on a lazy Sunday afternoon to hear the sounds of a really great jazz band. So now, here for your auditory pleasure is just a taste of a saxophone quartet, Saxquatch, playing Sunday Barbecue. <laughs> If you'd like to learn more about free concerts in the parks, a list of upcoming concerts is available at www.cob.org slash parks. Got a little quiz for you. You know what covers over 70% of the Earth's surface? Water. Yeah. That sounds like a lot of water, doesn't it? But only 2.5% is fresh water, and 3 tenths of 1% is in lakes, rivers, and streams. Yeah, I said 3 tenths of 1%. As the old saying goes, 
You don't know the value of water until the old well is running dry. Rain barrels can be a part of the solution. Look out your window the next time it rains and imagine catching all that water running off your roof and using it in your garden. Anitra Esaturo, water conservation specialist at the city's rain barrel expert. Water conservation is very important in our area. People think that because it rains all the time that we have an abundance of water and that we don't need to conserve. But in reality, we only get about 40 inches of rain per year. 40 inches might seem like a lot of rain, but actually there are cities in Arizona that receive more rainfall in the summer than we do here in Bellingham. Here at the water treatment plant, we treat about 10 to 12 million gallons of water per day. In the summertime, this doubles as people use it for their outdoor watering. Rather than using drinking water for your gardens, why not install a rain barrel? Rain barrels can actually collect up to about 600 gallons of water in a one inch storm. And really, this is more than adequate for an average homeowner's outdoor watering needs. You can buy rain barrels over the internet, through catalogs, or you can make your own by going to the local hardware store and buying the parts and materials, which are pretty inexpensive. And they're a lot simpler to make than people think. Oh, actually, they're, they're quite simple. Um, you do need uh, a drill with a, uh, with a drill bit, a uh, circular drill bit to drill the hole. After that, I mean, you can, you know, it takes about maybe a half an hour to construct one. They're, they're 55 gallon tanks each, so there'd be 100, 110 gallons over there. So um, it, uh, it actually goes quite a ways. It goes into uh, gardening uh, and also even the plants inside our house we use it for. Yeah, what I've actually uh, done here from one of the downspouts from the house, uh, I've just removed the um, bottom portion right here and hooked on this um, little elbow adapter here. Cut a hole into the um, top of the barrel and put on a little mesh screen to keep out uh, leaves and debris. And um, water just nicely flows right into here. Uh, there's a downspout uh, down here that you can hook up your regular hose or even a soaker hose to. The fuller they are, the more um, pressure you're going to have coming out of them. Um, and then on this one here, I do have uh, an overflow tube from this one going into the second one here. I mean, I think it's a great way to go. It just kind of makes makes me feel good to be able to conserve. Yeah. Uh, yeah I've always been interested in the concept of harvesting rainwater uh, just from a, a, I guess, an ecological point of view. It's good for gardening. I, you know, rainwater has more nitrogen in it available nitrogen in it, I, I believe, than like, you know, groundwater or city water. I'll make sure the barrels are, you know, you know where they came from, you know if you're going to use them to water animals or anything with, make sure they're food grade and, uh, you know, they didn't have any nasty chemicals in them. And that would be the only th two things that I would really think about again if I, if I you know, do. I'll probably replace those barrels with blue food grade plastic barrels that they got. The physical reality of rain barrels is, is, isn't going to change the world, but if you can get people to just start thinking that, uh, to use what's around them. My water bill in the summertime is huge, and um, we're on city water, but we're not in the city, so we pay a surcharge and we have limited use, and so I want to stay within my means, but I don't want my gardens to die through the summer, which is a big water user. I have, over the last two summers, saved enough money to pay for my rain barrels. I just hook a regular hose up, and then because they're elevated, um, the gravity feeds the water into the hose, and I can pretty much go anywhere I want with it. I incorporated them into planter on this side, and um, my compost and trash and my dog yard on the other side. So most people don't even realize the rain barrels are there. I just see it as good sense and, you know, economically sound and environmentally sound, which are my concerns. You know, I want things to stay as nice as they are forever. And so I'm doing my part. Write this down in your calendar. Tuesday evening, August 1st, is National Night Out Against Crime. Last year, hundreds of Bellingham citizens turned out for events all over Bellingham on National Night Out Against Crime. Cookouts, block parties, contests, ice cream socials, and more involving citizens, law enforcement agencies, civic groups, businesses, neighborhood organizations, and city officials. Now, Bellingham joined some 10,000 communities worldwide in fighting crime 
by helping people get to know their neighbor. Officer Tara Fleetwood from the Bellingham Police Department tells us more. believe that National Night Out is one of the most significant things that we can do as a community. It really gets neighborhoods involved at a grassroots level and the effectiveness of crime prevention, of being proactive in your community, really starts by getting to know your neighbors. It's a study in disorganization. What is fun disorganization? Okay. On August 1st of this year, Neighborhoods in the city of Bellingham will get together as a community and several types of different events will take place. It can be as simple as a ice cream social. That's cool. You can have as many cookies as you'd like. And they can even have speakers come out from the fire department, the police department and other agencies to their neighborhoods to kind of meet those people and get involved with the neighbors at that level. Should I say it again? It's a joy to feed so many people. And there's cream, sugar, uh, you gotta push this open like that, there you go. Bellingham is a safe community, but that doesn't mean that it's not good to be involved and aware as neighbors. We live really busy lives and taking the time to get out in the neighborhood and meet people who live next door that you may have never really met before. So it's a great opportunity to network with those folks and also to meet members of the law enforcement community as well. This is Amy, she lives right next door here. She, uh, good thing about it, about a next door, knowing your next door neighbor is like, when we went to France, she wants the house, when they go, whatever, you know. And, and it, to participate in National Night Out, you can contact me by phone at the Bellingham Police Department. That phone number is 676-6924, or you can go to the city website, go to the police page, and there's a registration form you can fill out online and send to me email or print and send through the mail. On every Inside Bellingham, we take a question that we received from our viewers and pose it to the person in the city who can best answer it. Our question this month is... How do I get outside and volunteer in Bellingham? Well, the person we went to for the answer was Tim Wall from Bellingham Parks and Recreation. Well, one of the ways you can do it is go to the Parks Department Volunteer Program. We've got people that work a lot in very manicured sites, kind of in the middle of town. We've got wilder places. Uh, we're hoping to have a lot of work going on Samish Hill, for instance, in the north part of Samish Hill. We've got Woodstock Farm. There's plenty to do, and there's plenty of little niches that a volunteer can carve out that they can see there some progress, and they can see it change through the seasons, and, and they love it. Well, we're uh, volunteering here. We're uh, cleaning out this hillside. We're planting some grass seed in there, watering it. Uh, getting rid of the uh, weeds and so on. And my wife and I are presently living in a, renting an apartment, so uh, this is a great chance for us to get out. And we're new to the area, so uh, we're enjoying meeting people and, uh, and that. I've been working for uh, Boy Scouts. It's just fun work. We do have people of all ages that come to work parties. And if you have young children, call ahead, find out what the job is, and be willing to maybe keep an eye on them a little bit. Good job. Sometimes there's something for everybody, and it, it can be a lot of fun that way. We want you to have fun. That's, that's what it's about. We want you to see the site. Typically, you spend two to sometimes three hours on a particular job, of which there are many types. Uh, and then you can go out and be on your own. You can have your picnic. You can uh, go up to the bluff and sit and look out. You can look around at the old buildings. And you can come early. You can stay late. It's, a, it's kind of a place to go and feel like you're contributing to the community and, and also achieve some peace of mind. You can get more information about volunteering with the Parks Department at www.cob.org slash parks. And if you have a question about city services or policies that we can answer here on Inside Bellingham, 
You can send that question to us in an email at btv10 at cob.org. Another regular feature here on Inside Bellingham is our on-the-job segment with stories about city employees and the work they do providing services to citizens. This month we'd like to introduce you to Jennifer Eluck, who is a permit technician in the city's permit center. Actually, I believe my title is Princess of Permits, and that's, that's on my calculator, and if you, I have a princess pillow there on my desk. So. Before the permit center was built, if you had a building permit application, you had to visit at least three, if not more, departments that were all in separate offices in this building, and sometimes in a separate building altogether. The permit center is great because now we have staff from four departments here. We have building services, the planning division, public works, and also the fire department. And people now can come to one place and get most of their questions answered and okay. they don't have to run around to different departments. The departments come to them. Printing out new sheets. Okay, great. There is a list of everything. And what did you change? Floor plan stuff? Yeah. Added a smoke van. Uh, the most interesting thing I do here at the Permit Center is helping customers with their specific project. Every project is unique and has unique constraints, problems, regulations that apply to it and I'm constantly learning. Almost every question I get on the phone or here at the office is something that I do research on and learn about different laws and regulations that apply to it. Parcel number. Mm -hmm. I need the parcel number and the legal description okay. for you that. The legal description? If that's, I don't think that's the legal description I'm anymore. I think that's it. The most common question I get is, do I need a building permit? Okay. Yep. And usually the answer is yes, unfortunately. Most building activity that anyone does on their home or their business does require a building permit. Very few things are exempt, uh, mostly finished work such as wallpaper, paint, and carpet. But anybody replacing a window or uh, replacing drywall does need a building permit. The reason I love Bellingham is because it offers so much. I really like being near the water and I like being in an area that is just very naturally beautiful. Working in public service must be genetic because much of my family has also worked in public service. My mom works for the fire department as a dispatcher here in Bellingham. I have an ancestor that signed the Declaration of Independence and one of my aunts works for the Premier in Alberta. I really like living downtown. I like living here because I can walk everywhere I need to go. I walk to work, I walk to shopping and dining, and it's great to be able to do that and not have to take your car. I would like this, to see the city become more culturally diverse, and I would like to see the downtown grow and keep away from much of the sprawl that I think a lot of citizens are really worried about. I don't want growth to happen too quickly or without good planning, just like any, anybody else that lives here. And I really hope that when I'm here in 20 to 30 years, that I'm just, a just as proud of the city of Bellingham then as I am now. We hope you enjoy this edition of Inside Bellingham. It'll air several times each week. Find out when by checking our schedule on the BTV10 website or by looking in Saturday's Bellingham Herald newspaper. If you have feedback or ideas we'd love to hear from you, you can reach us through our website or directly via email. As my daughter Jessie will gladly tell you, school's out, summer's here, and life is brand. Take your family out to a free concert in the park. Do a new deck on your house. But uh, go see Jennifer over at the Permit Center first. I'm Doug Waldo. For all of us here at the City of Bellingham, thanks for watching.